Hi everyone, it's David Mood here from Studio One Expert. Now in the last few weeks we have covered at Studio One Expert all of the big new features of Studio One 3.2, like the VCA faders and the mix effects with the console shaper plugin, the new automation features, new comping features, or the smart tool which got even smarter now with 3.2. And without a doubt, these are the biggest new features in 3.2. But uh, apart from them, Prisoners also included a lot of small improvements and new features in 3.2. And I thought it would be uh, nice to give you an overview about this in a separate video. So here we go. The first thing I'd like to show you is not even included in the release notes for Studio One 3.2. I'm not sure why, maybe Prisoners thought that it's a too small of a thing to even mention it. Or maybe they just forgot it. Anyway, for me it's actually quite a big one. So if I open the mixer, and if we have a look at the sand here. Now, the first thing is, if I adjust the sand level now, as you can see, I have an indication of the sand level at all times. Where if you use a Studio One for a bit of a longer time, you know that this was not the case at all before. Sometimes, if you had luck, uh, the sand level was indicated, but many times it wasn't. So now we can see it at all times if we adjust the sand level. That's very, very good. But what is even better than that is that now we can also adjust the sand vertically, not only horizontally with the mouse. So you just go here and press the left mouse and you can drag it up and down instead of dragging it left and right. And of course, just like always, if you hold down shift, you can adjust the sand level in finer increments. That's very, very nice. And I mean, the sand sliders were always a thing which I always criticized in the past, also in a video, because I felt that it's a bit. this is a bit toy-like still for a professional DAW. But uh, now, I mean, it's not perfect, but uh, for me it's a much more natural movement to move the mouse up and down, because it's just like with the fader, you know, you move it up and down, and now you can do the same here with the sands. Very nice. The second thing here, now we can move insert effects from one channel to another. It was always possible to just grab uh, an insert effect and drag it to another channel, but in this case, as you can see, it copies it. But now if we hold down a modifier key, let's say Alt, we can move this over, and as you can see, uh, it gets uh, not only copied, but it removes it from the other channel. Actually, in the release notes it says you need the modifier key ALT, but I found that it works with all modifier keys, so also with CTRL or SHIFT. If you hold a SHIFT, for example, you can move it back, and it works also with this. Very nice. Okay, let's move on to the next new feature. Now we have a direct shortcut to get to the insert effects which you have on the master bus. And that is, you can double click here, on the level meters of the main out. Just double click and as you can see I have here two plugins on the mix bus and we have even a small button here which brings us to the post fader inserts where I have a spectrum meter inserted. So we can switch here between the pre fader inserts and the post fader inserts. That's very nice so we can always very quickly uh, get access to our plugins on the master bus without even to having to open the mixer. Nice. Next we have a few new options for the transport functions and you can find them in three places. One is here under transport, options, loop follow selection, enable play start mark and return to start uh, on stop. I'll explain them in a second. Just show you that you can also reach the same options here on if you right click on any of the transport controls you get to the same three options and also you can right click on the timeline and here you also find enable play start marker and the loop follow selection. The enable play start marker is an interesting thing. Let's activate it. And as you can see, we have now here a small green, uh, whatever that is, <laughs> arrow. And if you now move the cursor to somewhere else and hit play, you can see the playback starts from this marker. So it doesn't matter where the cursor is, if I hit play, the playback always starts from the same position. 
I'm not too sure for what I would use this. Maybe some of you has an idea and can give me a hint in the comments what this can be good for, but so just that you know, you can find it here. Enable play start marker. I'll switch it off for now again. The another new option is loop follow selection here. And what this does is if we draw a new selection, which is now very easy, of course, with our smart or smart tool, as you can see, the loop follows this, follows it wherever I draw the selection. Also very nice, uh, but I will turn it off for now and loop this whole thing again. Then we have a new function for an instrument track, like I have here. If you create an audio track, I prepared it here, it was just hidden. So if you have an empty audio track, we can now simply grab this instrument uh, event and drag it down to the empty audio track and look what happens. The whole thing gets transformed to audio and we can play it back. And we also have the indication here with these small uh, dots that it is coming from an instrument track. Now the cool thing is, if I, let me just delete this event. If you just uh, create a range of a certain part on this instrument part and drag this down, and as you can see, only this part gets rendered. Very nice. And you can also create several ranges if you hold on Shift and then drag both down. And then you have two new uh, audio files rendered from this instrument track. Very nice and handy option. Now finally, the last thing I'd like to show you is something that you may already know. And I've also showed it in my video about the new automation features. But it's so nice that I thought I include it here anyway. So we have a new quick zoom shortcut. If you hold on Alt and Shift on a PC, or I guess this would be Option and Shift on a Mac, like this. And if you now draw a range, then Studio One immediately zooms to this range which you have just drawn. And again, if you press Alt and Shift and do a single click, a single left click with the mouse, then you return to the zoom level you had before. So again, hold on Alt and Shift, just draw a range with the mouse, let go, and you are zoomed in. Again, Alt and Shift, single click, and you are back to the zoom level where you were. This is very, very handy, and I'm already using this a lot. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching. I've been David. See you soon, and bye-bye.